We're going to be looking at setting up a project for database integration, like an overview of using JPA and Hibernate. Um, so we're going to set up a project. We're going to define Hibernate configurations, persisting data with Hibernate, using JPA configurations, initializing the database for an application, initializing a database with scripts, and then just summarizing everything all in the single video based off of a long one from Skillsoft, but this will be much more concise. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is open a MySQL workbench. And we are going to create a database called employee database or employee DB. Remember these names are very important, especially when we're using them like this. We want to use this. So if we run it, we can see that we're using it right here. If I were to run this, it would not work because this database is already in use, which we're using right here. We want to show our tables. And since I've already made this program, we're gonna have a table called employee. We're going to show create table employee running this we are going to create this and then we can select star from employee just like we have done in previous videos and in doing this we are going to get our output right here now how do we get this output well first we're going to have to make a new project and with this we're going to want to if we're on windows we're going to want to open this terminal and inside of this terminal we're going to go into our eclipse workspace and then we are going to have all this information right here it'll be in the description link below the like button so we can just easily pop this in but this is what it's going to look like right here. So we paste this in and it's going to generate a project that looks just like this. So that's all the information that we need right here. So now we're going to open up our favorite IDE. We can use IntelliJ just because I like it. We're gonna go into new, or actually not new, we're gonna go into open and we can go into wherever we store this. If we go into like, I put it in the Eclipse workspace, um, I chose JPA intro. So this is going to be our file we're going to see that we have a pomxml and an src file that's what we want so we are going to open this file i've opened it in here and now i'm going to add some files which we'll go over in a second because this isn't how it starts out but we do have a pomxml file and what we want are the dependencies inside of here it's going to come with a standard pomxml file but we're going to want to change some of these right here so if we need to we can change these um, these are our group IDs, artifact IDs, version. I don't think we want to change these exactly. Um, the group ID is whatever package that you made it inside of the actual generation right here. We have our com.skillsoft.jpa right here. And then we have our artifact ID, which is the name of our JPA intro. And then we have our version. And then we just have the name of our JPA intro again. We are gonna have our properties. I'm on 18 for this. If we go into a new, we go project. We can see that the JDK I'm using is 18, hence the 18 right there. And we just have a UTF-8 for our project build. And then we're gonna to want to put our dependencies inside of here. So, so far we're going to be using these. We're going to be using these and these. And these can be easily found on our Maven repository. So we can easily just search this and then copy them over, selecting the version and then getting whatever we need to and putting it inside of here. If there's a refresh button, it says like Maven, you wanna click that to make sure that they're imported inside of here. Next, super simple, we're going to want to make an employee class. We have these variables right here. We have this default constructor. We have this parameterized constructor. And then we have these getters and setters inside of here. Next, we're going to want to make our XML files. To do this, we need to be in a resources folder. To make our resources, because it's not going to be generated automatically, we're going to be in main. We're going to go to new. And we want to click directory. And the first thing that should pop up is our resources. So that's how that would work. Instead of our resources, we want to make a new directory, and that's going to be our meta inf, meta dash inf, all in caps. And then we are going to want to make these two files. It's going to be hibernate.cfg.xml, and then employee, but this should be capitalized e, just like our classes right here, and then .hbm.xml. So hibernate.cfg.xml, and then employee.abhm and then employee.hbm.xml. So we have these two XML files right here, and then we have our apps, employee, and then the app right there. The app should have been auto-generated when we did this through our command prompt right here. So now inside of each of these, let's start out with our Hibernate here and here. We have our version right here, we have our doc type, and then inside of here, this is where we want to configure our database right here. Inside of here, we have our property name. It's going to be this right here, this is standard, um, we're going to want to have our local host. The local host, even though if we go to mine, it says that we have a MySQL 80, the standard one is going to be like 3306. So that's for our employee database. This right here, this next part, the employee DB is going to be 
our table right here, our database that we're storing it into. Um, our table, show create table employee, that's going to be actually created from here. So we're not creating anything, we're just showing the table that we created inside of here. So once we are able to understand this, we can go back in here and we can see that we have this connection that we're making. Inside of this connection, we need our URL and this is our URL that we're looking at. Now we want to pass in our root username and then our password. So typically it's going to be root and then this password should be have been set up when you set up MySQL. Those are videos and there are videos about that all over YouTube that you can look up on how to download MySQL. So then we have property name dialect and then we're going to pass this in right here. And then we have our property name show SQL, format SQL, and then we have this right here, this hbm2ddl.audio that we're going to or that dot auto that we're going to put in and then we have to have our resource right here. Next we're going to have our session factory and we're going to close our hybrid. Next we're going to close our session factory and our hibernate configuration. We're closing these, we're going to use our hibernate configuration and session factory in our app.java. Next we're going to look at our employee. Inside of here we're going to do the similar thing where we have our doc type except inside of here we have hibernate configuration. Inside of here we have hibernate mapping. So we're going to do mapping inside of here. Those are the difference between the two. We have our class name that we're writing to, com.skillsoft.jpa.employee. So that is the class that we're getting. We're going to create a table called employee, and then we're going to pass in these parameters. We have a name ID, we have column ID, and then we generate the class native. Next, we have our property name, which is the first name, and this is going to the column first name. And then we have the rest of these right here for last name, job, and salary. Notice our employee, we have ID, first name, last name, job, and salary. So this is how we would do it with XML files. We need two XML files, um, not very easy to do for a Hibernate. We're gonna look at how to do a JPA, but we're gonna do that after we run this app. So in our app right here, as long as we have our Palm XML file configured correctly, so let's take a quick look at it. It's gonna look like this. Scroll down a little bit and it should look like this. If all of our dependencies, because that's the most important part, our dependencies are imported correctly, this should work fine. I had a lot of issues at first, but creating it through the command prompt and then creating it inside of here with the correct Palm XML file, and that will give us the correct result. So we should have our import org.hibernate.session. We should be able to import through our org hibernate. That's important. If we're not able to do this, then we've done something wrong with the previous ones, and I've had a lot of error with that. It took me a long time to figure out. So we have all these imports right here. We're gonna make a new configuration right here, and then we're going to pass in our hibernate.cfg, and it's an XML. So we're passing this inside of here. And then we're making a new session factory. We're just calling it factory and we're passing in our build session for the factory. And then after we have this session, session is equal to factory.open session where we open this. We're gonna close it later, you'll see that. But we're doing all of this to just begin this. And then this is where we're adding in employees. Uh, we could add in more if we wanted to. We like could like make a third employee. So I'll just duplicate this. I'll make this three and then I'll just call this three employee actually you can't start it with a integer so we'll just do three employee and we'll call this third man it will do everything else the same and then even though we want and then we have this transaction statement where we do a session dot begin transaction so we transact these into our actual database i'm going to duplicate this just so we have third employee here and then we are going to want to do a save right here this should actually be three employee so i named it wrong even the saves crossed out it's going to save it inside of here uh, we have transaction.commit, so we can commit it to this transaction. It's gonna kind of encompass. It's gonna kind of. It's gonna kind of enclose this, and then we're gonna have the session.close, and then we're gonna have this factory.close to close everything up, and then we're going to want to run it. So we can come up here. We can do run, and hopefully it'll work. Again, I had so much trouble with this, and hopefully it'll now work. So after a lot of debugging, it works. So even though we have these lot of warnings, we can go down here. We can see that it's passing through or hibernate through here. So we have hibernate drop table if exists employee. And that's basically saying that in our hibernate right here, we were telling it to actually create a new table every single time that this was run. So every single time, even if we have something in here, we're gonna create a new table. So we create this table employee and then we add this inside of here. And then, so we create this table employee with these types of things. We have a variable char of 255, meaning that first name could be at maximum 255 characters. Same thing for last name, same thing for our jar and then we have a float of 53. So Hibernate takes care of all of this right here. And then we have our insertion right here. Uh, we're not inserting insertion, insertion, and then our another insertion right here. So now if this worked correctly, we can go to MySQL, 
we can we can see that I only have three in here so this should have updated it let's run this and we can see that we have three inside of here so that's how you do it with XML we can see we need a lot of files but it's a little bit easier to do it with JPA so next we're gonna look at how to do it with JPA configurations some things we should mention before we go into the more annotations based is that this right here inside of our hibernate.cfg.xml this auto right here is going to be an auto incrementation so if we go into our mysql we can see that in our results right here we have one we have two we have three now these aren't the ids that we set inside of our app right that's because we're using our auto incrementation right here so with this it's going to auto increment our id which is our primary key so that's important to note in our app notice how we're passing in our hibernate.cfg.xml file that's going to be this file right here and that uses this file to set up our table so this sets up our table this is going to fill in our table using this employee.java class is kind of like a template so that's how all that would work we get this file name inside of here and then we do this configuration now if we want something more general we're going to want to use jpa so to start this off we are going to need to make a persistence file you can see that inside of our resources meta inf I've gotten rid of all the other files and I just made a new persistence XML file. So the first thing that we need to note is our palm XML. We need to make sure everything is the correct version. And this is because I'm using the one that's from Skillsoft and if you do it with a different version, it will not work. So that's just something that I took a long time to troubleshoot. Um, and it'll prompt you to really update it to the newest version, but don't do that. So everything else here should be the same. I'll pull this down so we can have more room. We have our properties. Uh, this could just be compatible with whatever is running for your specific part. This one should be the same. Um, and this just depends on your Maven compiler. And then now is where our dependencies can be different. So this is what I'm running. We have our persistence XML file. And inside of here, it's going to look like this. So this first part is the important part. It's kind of like the header that we're going to be looking at. We're using the version 2.1. We're going to just have the name be employee DB unit. So this is just a way to identify our persistence XML if we have multiple of them. Now we have a class, and this is coming from our package, com.skillsoft, and then we have .jpa.employee, because we want to get our employee right there. So that's just important to note. We have our properties next, um, and our properties is where we're going to be looking at everything. This is kind of like what we did with the previous one. So we have our Java, our Java X persistence JDSA URL, and this is just mapping to this one. We have our user, we have whatever password, and this can be changed to whatever your correct password is, just a random one. Um, and then we have our property name. Also, by the way, this password is set when you download MySQL. Now we have the property name here. And this property name is going to be important to what we want to do. So if we have drop and create, this drops and creates a new table. If we just have create, it's going to create a new table. Um, and we can set it to none if we wanted to. And then we could do like like we have here, drop or create. Um, and, and we're going to go over these in a little bit. So similar to hibernate, we want to have the hibernate.show SQL, hibernate.format SQL. Um, and we are using hibernate here, but this is just JPA, so it's more general. Um, and I like it. It's a little bit easier. So we have properties, persistence, and unit. Now, unlike the previous one where we needed a whole other file to configure everything, we can just go into our employee class and use annotations. We can have this at entity right here, and we have this at ID. So this is the way it's going to make it an entity and then identify it. Let's go to our app. Inside of our app, we're changing some things. It's pretty similar, everything below here. But let's look at this first one. We have our entity manager factor. We're calling it factory. Um, and then we have our persistence dot create entity manager factory and then we pass in our name this name is with our xml file right here they have to be the same exact name so then we have our entity manager here set it equal to factory dot create entity manager um, and then we're just doing a get transaction so we're beginning we are passing these transactions through we store these in first and second employee and then we have our entity manager dot persist and then we have our first employee and then our second employee so this is to persist these objects into our database and it's equivalent to the hibernate save methods. So instead of saving, we're doing the dot persist. And then we're just going to do the get transaction dot commit. So that closes it and then close our entity manager in our factory. This is what we have previously. Now here, I only have two employees just to show the difference. If we are to run this, um, this is what it's going to look like. So we have this here. We have a drop table if it exists for employee and then we are creating our employee table. 
So let's actually go to our employee table in MySQL right here. If we just want to select star from employee, and we can see we get our Peter and Sam. This is exactly what we wanted. Now, what if we go into our persistence XML and we change this instead of drop in create? What if we just change it to create? And then we can go into our app and we can try running it again. And we'll see what we get. And if we go back into our MySQL, we can run this again. Um, it looks like it just did the same exact thing, um, Peter and Sam. To make sure that it is doing that and it's just not doing anything weird, what we can do is we can go into our app.java, we can comment out the second employee, comment this out, and we can try running it again. So after we run this, it's going to give us the same message. So if we go to MySQL, run this again, um, we can see that nothing happened, which is exactly correct. And the reason why nothing happened is because we already have a table called employee. So if we wanted to update this so that it has just one employee and not both employees, we would have to make it a drop in create like how we have here. So if we go back to our MySQL, we can run this again. And we can see that we just have Peter. So that create is only going to create if there's not already a table here. Now we can also just do none like this and then we can run it and then we wait for it to run it's going to look like this and then nothing should happen so we can run this again you have nothing here we could do a drop table employee in here we can run this so it dropped all the table employees we can see that there's no employee found so since there's no employee found let's go back to our app.java we can run it again and then we can go into our MySQL. We can do the select, run this part only, and we can see that it doesn't exist. And that's because we just have that create, this none right here. So there's no, nothing there. Um, let's change it to create so it actually makes something. And let's actually change it to drop in create. So that way, if we want to change it in the future, it will just drop the current table and make it again. So we're gonna run this, it should look familiar. We're going to go into MySQL, we can do our select, and we can see that we have Peter and Sam here. So that's how we would do it with JPAs. Next, we are going to look at this. However, we are going to do it with scripting. So we're going to initialize the database for our app, and then we're going to look at it with scripts, and then we will finish. To now make scripts, we're going to go into our persistence.xml file. And what we're going to want to add in here is this, all this down here. And we'll go in this one by one. So this first one that we have, property name is equal to Java X persistence dot schema generation. And then we have our drop source. Um, this is going to be for a drop script. So we have this drop source and then we have our dropped script source. So this is the script and this is going to be the value. Notice how inside of here we have our meta dash inf and then we have our dash or slash drop.sql. So we know our persistence.xml is in our resources in our meta imp file. Well, we have to specify that our drop is going to be in our meta imp file. So it's inside of here. This is our source. This is defining the source, and this is defining the file. Now we are going to have this script right here where we are creating. It's the same thing except just creating it. So now that we have that, these two lines, or four lines actually down, we can go and make these. So we're gonna go into our meta inf, make a new file, and we're gonna want a drop.sql. And we do a drop table if exists employee. And just for our future example, we're gonna do a drop table if exists department. department. We're gonna do the same thing for create as well. So for create, we're gonna create the table employee. Now we have to do these all in one line. We have our ID integer not null. This is because the ID has to be there. For an employee to exist id is not there we're going to get some errors so we have to say it's not null so the id can never be null this also means that we'll never have null in our output then we have our first name var char means it's a variable that can be of size 255 same thing for last name and job we have salary it's a double precision so that means that our precision it's going to be uh, i believe two decimal places after and it's not null and then we have the primary key which is our id 
And then we have this create table for our department where we pass in the ID integer and its name, location, and primary key. So that's how we would do that. Next, let's go back to our persistence.xml file. Inside of here, well, what if we want to add things in? Well, what we can do is tell our Java or JPA provider that the data.sql script must be run after the drop and create action is carried out and before any of the operation on the database we defined in our Java sources has been run. Now, what does this mean? It means we have this drop and create. So we're going to create a new table. We are going to have our drop and we are going to have our create here. Now, inside of our application, we know that we add these employees. Well, what if we want to do something before we even get inside of here? That's what this is for. We have our same kind of uh, way right here, Java X persistence.sql load script source. So we're going to be loading inside of here. Um, we can notice that there is a little bit of a difference right here. We have a schema generation create script source. We're not using a schema here. We're using a SQL load script source or SQL, not SQL. It's a little bit different, but SQL load script source. And the value is going to be our kind of path that we have the data. So where is this data file? Well, we have to create it inside of our meta dash inf. It's going to be right here. And inside of here, we have insert into our employee and then we pass in our parameters that we have here and then we insert into them. And the same thing for our department. And if we go back to our app.java, we haven't changed anything here. We can run this and it's going to give us the following. We have this here, hibernate drop table if exists employee, hibernate drop table if exists department. And then we are going to add the employee. We're going to add into the department and we are going to do this. Um, we have these values right here. We see that we have Zoe. And then we have our, we should have another person, or actually no, we only have one person. Um, and then into our department, we are gonna have the first name job, or actually it's ID, name, location. So that's going to be this hibernate here. And then we have this hibernate here as well. So that's how we would look at these. Um, this one I believe is for the Java file, where we create the table employee, or actually this is for the creating of the tables. So this one's drop and create. Uh, this one's actually running the SQL files. So this is the SQL files that we made. Notice how we have the 255, 255, 255, 20, 50, and ID. These are the ones that we created. So if we look back at our persistence file, we can see that this line and this line are going to be executed in the ones I've highlighted. And this line happens before the drop in create right there. And then these ones are actually inserting people inside of here. So this first one right here is going to insert Zoe. And then this one is going to insert what is ever, whatever is in our app.java. So, you know, we have multiple other employees inside of here, like Peter and Sam. So that means if we go to our MySQL workbench, we can go show tables. We see we have department and employee. Now let's do the show create table employee. And if we do this, we can click on this, we can go to open value and viewer, and we have all of the things that we assigned for it. And this would be the same thing for our department. Now, all we would need to do is just control D, duplicate this line and replace this with department. We can select star from employee, we can run this, and we can see we have everyone inside of here, Peter, Zoe, and Sam. Notice how all of them exist because they have all they all have an ID. Um, and we still have null here, but I'm sure there's a way to get rid of that. Let's do from the department as well. So we'll take this out and we'll write in department and let's try to run both of these at the same time. That's probably not gonna work actually. We want to run one at a time. So we have our department one tech floor three and we can do employee beforehand and we get this as well. So that is how we would work with scripts in our IntelliJ. Eclipse is very, very similar. We have this going to our database in MySQL where it's being stored. And that is it for this program and going over this material. All of the previous will be in the playlist link below the like button. It's very helpful and very useful.